Hey, if you're interested, go check out the first episode of this Valheim series. It'll make this episode make a little bit more sense, but you don't have to if you don't want to. If you're a returning viewer, enjoy the video. Coming back after last episode, I try to parkour onto my roof just to make sure I'm still able to do it. I attempt to chop down a new tree, but give up because I don't know if my axe is strong enough yet. By the way, my axe was strong enough, but I was too scared to use up all its durability because I didn't know how to repair equipment yet. I bashed a grayling skull in with nothing but the mere might of my fists. I finally learned how to remove the campfire. I placed a new source of light, perished at the hand of a level 2 gray dwarf. Oh my god, he just killed me in one shot. I also invited one of my friends to play on the world with me from now on. Meet Kaiser G. Tried to decipher the tablet that told me how to summon the first boss. It said hunt his kin, but I read it wrong and thought it was hunt his skin. Remember this, because it's going to be important later. We started to beat up deer for their skin. As I said earlier, I didn't know how to repair equipment, so I just kept making new axes. They're like, when they're broken, they stay in my inventory and they just blink red. And I have like four in my inventory that are blinking. A group of gray dwarfs launched a raid against us. They were no match, of course, until they sent their strongest warrior. Oh, there's a big one, really big one. Get inside, get inside. Oh my god. Oh my god, okay. that's huge. After some time taking arrows in his knees, I thought he was weak enough for me to finish him off with melee. I swear that went better in my mind. We started to search for a new place called home, a place where all men would be free, a place of equal opportunity, a place where a person has an equal chance to succeed in the arena of the free market, a place where all people are considered equal, as long as they meet these qualifications. Say! And then we stumbled upon it, an island of pure beauty, tranquility, nature, peace, this will be our promised land. Our new house will start with stairs to raise it off the ground. In Valheim, you can't really build like you would in Minecraft or Terraria. Structures need consistent support or they will break and fall apart. They need proper roofing or the wood will rot, and they need good ventilation so that the smoke from fires can escape. It was actually pretty difficult figuring all this out without looking it up. Kaiser G found out how to make beds and place two next to each other, so that when we sleep at night, we can both feel the radiant warmth of the other's body. So close, yet so unreachable. I started making a fence around the door for protection, but I ran out of wood, so I had to go gather some more. You're gonna see that this becomes somewhat of a trend in the game. Along with constantly having to collect wood to build stuff, trees are very dangerous. Who would have thought that if a tree falls on you, you'll die? Besides that event, trees are actually quite dangerous. If one rolls onto you the wrong way, you can take massive damage. I finished the fence on one side. I learned about the power of a hoe. You can flatten and raise land. We really should have known about this earlier. Maybe before we built this huge house. In the spirit of the hoe, I started building a second house. This will give both of us more space to work. I learned that trees could have a domino effect when they fell on each other. The potential for this is vast. I realized that I didn't want to cut down all the trees on the island because I thought it would bring down the market value, so I wanted to start chopping trees on the mainland instead. However, the mainland was difficult to access because we were cut off by the water. Since swimming in Valheim is Satan's spawn, I decided that there was only one path moving forward, and that was to build a bridge. You would be surprised how difficult it is to build bridges in this game. As I mentioned earlier, you need to build supports touching the ground, otherwise your build will break and fall. Trying to do this above water is the hard part. You also can't use the hammer if you're swimming, so you're basically forced to try and place supports below the platform while also standing on the platform. Eventually I figured out some methods to make this easier, but the bridge was finished the hard way. It started raining for the first time. The sky was trying to assault me with its moisture, but I wasn't going to get wet today as I was safely swimming under the bridge for cover. And then it was time for another nap. On day seven, we were ready to finish the basic structure of the bridge. Now that the bridge was connected, we could safely, easily, and quickly make it across the water surrounding our island. Remember what I said about logs rolling onto you? I still wanted to improve the bridge over time, but for now, being able to access the mainland was really helpful. Kaiser G was working on a sort of receptacle for passerbys at the island side of the bridge. We really didn't know if monsters would try to get on the island through the bridge, so this also serves as a small fort for defense. Collecting wood, the logs struck once more. Continuing work on the second house, I finished the foundation and lower walls first. Then I lit it up and went for a newer roof design. 
While I built my new home, Kaiser G was working on a boar pen. Our goal is to make them mate and then kill their children, to fashion weapons and such with their skin. Some might call that capitalism. Attempting to feed them was not such a simple task. I really don't know why they're so flustered. All we did was confine them in a small area against their will and threaten to kill their children. I finally learned how to repair my equipment. It was a little hammer button on the workbench menu, kind of like the hammers in Oblivion. My mortality drew me to another night of sleep. However, this night, I was without Kaiser G. Day 11 was just rain. However, today was boss fight day. I grabbed the deer hide we collected earlier from the deer we beat up, and we were ready for the first boss. The rain was sure to be a perfect backdrop for this boss battle, so we ventured out across the bridge, through the plains, and we arrived at the summoning stone. Remember what I said about me misreading the tablet? Well... <laughs> I read skin, which led me to believe that the summoning item was deer hide, but it was actually the deer trophies that the deer drop sometimes. We had plenty of these, we just didn't know it was the summoning item, so we didn't bring any. So I had to run back to the house and grab one. I made sure to grab exactly one. Nothing happened when we tried to summon him. Guess what? Offering two deer trophies. Oh my god, I literally had six in my inventory, but I dropped the other ones because I didn't think I would need more than one. <laughs> yeah. We needed two trophies to make it work. So instead of taking accountability, I forced Kaiser G to run back home this time and fix the mistake that I made. Upon his return, we summoned the boss. An incredible amount of screen shake rendered my eyeballs useless. The boss was a creature straight out of Pokemon. It was a lightning deer. Luckily, my axe was made of rock, and rock types are super effective against electric types. Overall, I'd say it was actually a pretty fun fight. I took the last hit, which means I did all the work, but Kaiser G got all the drops. Ikethyr drops the hard antler item, which is used to make the first pickaxe. So in order to make pickaxes for both of us and any more we might need in the future, we decided to farm him using the rest of the deer trophies we had. During the first rematch we had, I died at the very end of the fight. I died. Oh, you died. Just look at his health bar. I died the same way I died to the Grey Dwarf Brute earlier. I thought he was low enough health for me to run in and slash him, but he still had a couple of kicks in him, and it resulted in my demise. After making my way back, we continued to farm him. And as the last boss fell, I crafted my pickaxe, and the video ended. <laughs>